In this video, let us understand this technique of static replication. Now I am assuming that we understand how to delta H a vanilla option and therefore let's begin this video by trying to understand if we can extend this technique of delta hedging in a relatively easy way to this world of exotic options or not. Now when you talk about an exotic option such as the Asian option then remember that it's much easier to delta hedge an Asian option as compared to a vanilla option. The reason for that is that the underlying of an Asian option is the arithmetic average stock price computed using the stock prices observed on pre-decided dates during the life of the option. So this is what that arithmetic average would look like. I'm assuming that I'll be averaging on n pre-decided dates. Now as we progressively move closer and closer to the maturity of the option, we would already have fixed quite a few s's in the numerator of this average. As we keep moving forward, there will be fewer and fewer s's which are still unobserved, still random and hence any changes in the current stock price will progressively affect fewer and fewer terms in the numerator. Therefore, as you keep moving forward towards the maturity of the option, the payoff of an Asian option becomes more and more certain and therefore this kind of an option becomes relatively easier to risk manage. Now, how about we take a look at another kind of exotic and that is a barrier option. Remember this that a barrier option will be relatively more difficult to delta hedge as compared to a vanilla option. Let's take this example of an up and out call option. I'm assuming the barrier is at B, the strike is K and the time to maturity is capital T. Now let's do this before I proceed further. Let me quickly plot the region over which my option will have some meaningful non-zero value. Okay. So what I have done in this diagram is that I have plotted the stock price versus time. The only region of interest to me as far as valuation of this up and out call is concerned is time which is between today time equal to zero and capital T which is the maturity of the option and stock price in between let's say zero because stock price cannot become negative and B. The reason why I have limited myself to B is because this is an up and out call and therefore any stock price which is above B will knock out the option. The, the option will extinguish and become worthless. Okay. So this shaded green region is the region of interest over which my option will have a non-negative value. Okay. Now let's do this. Let's now get to the principle of static replication. The principle is that if I am able to locate a replicating portfolio, that repli replicating portfolio should exactly match the value of the target option on a certain boundary. In this diagram, the boundary is the green boundary here and the red boundary here. Then by implication, this replicating portfolio will also match the value of this target option everywhere in this green region. Okay, so step one is that I need to locate a replicating portfolio for my target option which matches the value of the target option on a pre-designed or a pre-decided boundary. In this case, it's the red and the green boundary and this replicating portfolio, I'm then assuming, will also match the value of my option in the entire interior region which is shaded in green. Once you have your replicating portfolio available with you, then hedging your target option is all about undertaking a position in your replicating portfolio which is opposite of the position in your target option. If you have sold your target option, which means in our case the up and out barrier 
to hedge this option we will buy the replicating portfolio and vice versa okay so let's begin with step one in which we have to find this replicating portfolio take a look at the green boundary the green boundary corresponds to the expiry of the up and out call if I am really located on the green boundary and I am assuming that I haven't touched the barrier during the life of the option then I know that the payoff of this up and out call will be equal to the payoff of a vanilla call of the same strike K and maturity capital T okay so this is my payoff of my up and out call and since I am expiring on this date itself this payoff is also equal to the value of my up and out call. I'm assuming here that I'm only limiting myself to those stock prices which are below the barrier B. Okay. Now, to replicate this payoff along this green boundary, in my replicating portfolio, all I have to do is I have to include a European call option of maturity, sorry, strike K which is the same as the strike of my up and out call and maturity T. How many of these options? Let's say one unit of this option, a single call option. Okay. So, or you can say in practice equal to the number of options which are of the up and out call style options, which you are trying to risk manage. If you are risk managing 10,000 up and out calls, then I would require 10,000 European calls of the same strike and maturity. Okay. So this single option, let me call it C1, will take care of the entire green boundary. Now let's come to the red boundary. The red boundary corresponds to the up and out barrier. If during the life of the option, the stock price comes and hits this red boundary or crosses this red boundary, my option is extinguished and it now becomes worthless. So therefore, as far as the value of my option is concerned, that the value V at any time T, given my stock price is B is equal to zero. Okay, anywhere along this red boundary. Now I need to insert into my replicating portfolio more options that can make the value of the replicating portfolio also go to zero if the stock price hits this red boundary during the life of the option. To do that, let me do this. Let me divide this entire red boundary into, let's say, three equal parts. You might, you might ask why three? At the moment, my answer is it's just convenience. Okay, I'm just picking this number three hypothetically. Now, let me do this. Since I have divided the entire boundary into three equal parts, let me introduce three European call options into my replicating portfolio. Okay. So, this is what we have here. Options two, three and four. Three options, one corresponding each to the three subdivisions of the red boundary. My first European call, which I have introduced corresponding to the red boundary is this call C2. The strike of this call is equal to the barrier level, which is B. The maturity of this first call is equal to T, the maturity of my barrier option. Then how many units do I need of this barrier, of this European call option corresponding to the barrier? Let me call that A2. I don't really know what this A2 is, I just call it as A2 because it's number of units of the second option. Then let me take a position in another European call, let me call it as C3. The strike of this call is also B, the barrier level, but the maturity of this call is T minus delta T, which is this time. Okay, The maturity of this guy, the second option was capital T. Okay. So this option, which is C3 matures at T minus delta T. And now you can guess my third option will be of strike B and expiring at T minus 2 delta T. Okay. 
So in all, what is my replicating portfolio comprised of? It's comprised of one European call whose strike matches the strike of the up and out call option and whose maturity is the same of as the up and out call. The number of units of this call option is one and it takes care of my entire green boundary. For my red boundary, I have three options because I divided my red boundary into three equal parts. All these three, they have a strike equal to B, which is my barrier level and their maturities are respectively T, T minus delta T and T minus 2 delta T. Okay, different maturities, but same strike and that is B. Now, the task at hand is to find out A2, A3 and A4 such that the value of the replicating portfolio is exactly zero along the red barrier. Okay, so let's do this. Let's place ourselves at this time point T minus delta T. Okay, let me quickly show you in the figure. I'm placing myself at this time point. Okay, let me also assume that the stock price at this moment is equal to B, which means that if I were to take a look at this table of positions in front of me, C4 is already gone. It would have expired at T minus 2 delta T. I'm standing at T minus delta T. C3 would have just expired and its value will be equal to zero. Why? Because strike is B and I'm assuming that the current stock price is also B. That means if T is equal to T minus delta T and if the current stock price is B, the only two options which have some value in the replicating portfolio are options one and two. So therefore, I can write the value of my replicating portfolio as one times the value of option one, let's call it C1, plus A2 times the value of the second option, let's call it C2. I want the value of this replicating portfolio to be equal to the value of the target option, which I know is equal to zero because I'm standing on the red boundary. Okay, so this first equation then very quickly gives me the value of A2. That's the only unknown in this equation. Okay. This equation, however, would need me to find out what the C1 and the C2 are when I place myself at T minus delta T and stock price equal to B. And for this purpose, I might need to use the Black-Scholes formula. Okay. Then let me come back to time point T equal to T minus 2 delta T. As you can see, I'm moving backwards in time. Okay, I position myself now at T minus 2 delta T. Again, I assume the stock price is a B. And if you were to take a look at the table, then option four would have just expired because its maturity is T minus 2 delta T and I'm standing at T minus 2 delta T. But since the strike of C4 is B and the current stock price, I'm assuming it to be B, it expires worthless. So at this time point, there are three options which are alive and these are C1, C2, C3. And I'm assuming at this moment, their values are C1, C2, C3, okay? So the value of my replicating portfolio, one times C1 plus A2 times C2 plus A3 times C3. And since again, I'm standing at the red boundary, the, it, it's, the value of my target option is a zero and I want my replicating portfolio to match this value of my target option. In this equation now, equation two, A2 is already known because I solved it from equation one. And therefore, I push that value of A2 into this equation two and I find out the only unknown and that's A3. Similarly, if I were to move back to T minus three delta T, which is actually today, T equal to zero, then as of today, all these four options are alive. If I were to hypothetically move the stock price, I know it's S0 as of today, but if I were to move it to equal to B, then I know that all these options, if I were to value them corresponding to the stock price equal to B, the value of my replicating portfolio should come out to be equal to zero. Okay, so therefore, this equation, equation three, has only one unknown and that's A4 because A1, sorry, A2 and A3 have already been calculated from equation one and equation two. So what have we done here? 
basically we have found out how many units of these three options corresponding to the red barrier I mean A2, A3 and A4 do we need to make sure that at these time points T minus 2 delta T, T minus delta T and T minus 3 delta T which is as of today and if stock price is equal to B my replicating portfolio has a zero value okay so therefore the value of my replicating portfolio it matches the value of my target option along the red boundary and also along the green boundary and therefore by implication it matches the value of my target option at all interior points in this green region okay so therefore all that is left to do is just take your replicating portfolio and enter into an opposite position in this replicating portfolio I mean which is opposite to the position in the target option okay so I repeat if your target option is a short position please buy your replicating portfolio now coming back to the choice of three remember that three was just a hypothetical choice I can actually and I should increase this number of subdivisions of my red boundary to make my static replication hedge more and more accurate the only downside to increasing this number of subdivisions of the red boundary is that I'll be forcing myself to enter into positions in more and more European call options okay so this static replicating portfolio remember that it's called static because you don't have to keep rebalancing it on a daily basis the only point in time when you need to touch this portfolio again is when your stock price hits the boundary just unwind or rebalance your static portfolio once you hit the boundary okay